Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. When Paul was in Berea, and as was his practice, he went to the synagogue, and he went and he shared to, about Jesus Christ being the promised Messiah of Israel. And that's what he's in a synagogue telling these Jews. And did that not cause him problem? Go read the book of Acts and you'll see what kind of problems it caused him. But when he went to Berea, it says, and this is the comment, it says that they were more noble-minded because they listened to what Paul said. But then they went and they searched the scriptures to see whether what he said was true or not true. Yes. Right? And Paul, the Word of God says that they were more noble-minded because they did that. Right. You need to be searching the Scriptures. When you hear a teaching, when you hear this teaching, when you hear any teaching, you need to be searching the Scripture to see whether indeed it's true, if it's of God or not. Right. There are so many people out there who right. are calling themselves the anointed. And what they are teaching and preaching is not the Word of God. One of the things that we need to look at is the fact that Paul wrote to Timothy, speaking of these same last days mm -hmm. that Jesus was speaking of in Matthew chapter 24. And he said, you know, in those last days, perilous times will come. Yes. There is great peril. This is a matter of life and death. This is not a game. We're not playing church here. That's why I said we're in search of what real Christianity is. And this is life and death. But he, one of the things he said, you know, men will be lovers of self, lovers of money rather than lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. But he said men will hold to a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. Mm -hmm. What's the power? The word. Well, the Holy, Spirit. the Holy Spirit is first and foremost the power of God, right? Mm -hmm. That's where, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're not going to have the power of God. Bada bing, bada boom. But the other thing is, it says, Paul wrote, and he said, that the word of the cross is the power of God unto salvation. Amen. The word of the cross. The word of the cross is that Christ came and he died for our sins. Is that yes. not I mean? He did for us what we could never do for ourselves. He went. Nobody took his life. He said he gave his life. Freely and he gave, gave his yes. life because the Father sent him to do that. All right? To take away the stain of sin from our lives. Mm -hmm. Because it took blood to do it. All right? It says in Leviticus that there's no atonement for sins without the shedding of blood, for the life is in the blood. The power of God is that we've been cleansed by that blood. Yes. The gospel starts with that. But you have to recognize that you're a sinner. Mm -hmm. If you're not a sinner, you don't, what do you need a Savior for? Right. He, he came to save us from sin. You know, you can go to a lot of churches and hear, He came to save you from poverty. He wants you rich. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know about that. Mm -hmm. He came to save you from being overweight. No, I don't know about it. He came to save you from sin, from the consequence of, consequence of sin, from the stain of sin, for, for the damnation that follows eternal sin, for the wages of sin is death. Christ died on that cross. That's the good news. That's the word of the cross. It is important to understand that when you're testing what you're hearing coming from preachers, it's just as important sometimes what they are not saying as what they are saying. Because you see, a half a truth can be a whole lie. Mm -hmm. That's why Paul instructed to Timothy to rightly divide the word of truth. Would you believe I tell you? Mm -hmm. The Bible clearly states, without doubt, I don't care what translation you have, the Bible clearly states there is no God. It does. It says it at least twice that I can think of in, in the book of Psalms. Yes. Well, it does say that there is no God. Of course, that's taken, that's a half of it. It says, only the fool says in his heart, there is, there is no God. God. Mm -hmm. you so need that whole you, need, you need the whole thing, otherwise that truth becomes a lie. Yes. You need to listen to what's being said, and you need to listen to what's not being said. Because somebody can come along, and they can say all kinds of nice things, and they can quote this scripture and that scripture, mm -hmm. but if they're not preaching the whole word, if they're not preaching the gospel, mm -hmm. which is that Christ died, if they're not preaching the word of the cross then they're preaching a false gospel. And some of the biggest churches in the United States of America have openly confessed they will not preach about sin That's right. because it turns people away. It turns people off. It hurts their self-esteem. Right. You know what it's going to hurt? It's going to hurt their life for all eternity if they don't hear 
and respond to the good news of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> that he came as an offering from the Father yes. to die in our place to pay the price for our sin. Test what you're hearing. Today is the day of judgment. You need to judge what you're hearing. There are things that you are absolutely not supposed to judge. Mm -hmm. There are people you are absolutely not supposed to judge. And by the same token, there are things that you had better be judging, that you had better be testing, that you had better be examining. If you hope to attain to the fullness of life in Jesus Christ, okay? I tell you that God cannot lie. He promised to save his people. He never changed his mind. Today he still calls them my people, my people, my people.